Welcome to the Profitable Farmer Podcast, where it's all about increasing the profitability of your farm by working smarter, not harder. G'day everyone, Westy here, or Dave Westbrook, of, uh, come in and hijacked the podcast, the Profitable Farmer podcast <laughs> off of Jeremy this week, or for this episode, So, um, and for absolute good reason. So for those that um, don't know me, I, or haven't seen me on the podcast, um, I'm a, a coach inside of the Platinum Program with Farm Owners Academy. So um, the reason why I've hijacked this podcast this week is I'm up in the Atherton Tablelands uh, with Joe Whitten. Um, Joe, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. <laughs> um, so this podcast will absolutely change your life like it did with myself and, and my family. And um, Joe, your, one of your cookbooks absolutely talks to that and we'll, <laughs> we'll sort of go there in a minute. But um, your uh, accolades, I suppose, is that you're the author of Cookie Cooking Thermomix Recipe Book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you're a podcast host or have your own podcast called Quirky Cooking Chats. Yep. Uh, Co-author of Life Changing Food Cookbook, Mm -hmm. and that's why this will uh, change your life, Um, (laughs) hence the the title of that book. Um, And you do lots of retreats um, as well, which we'll talk to in a minute, um, which is how we found you, and blogs, Mm -hmm. lots of social media stuff, lots of online, um, and then, yeah, online programs and, Mm -hmm. and workshops. Yep. Yeah, anything else that I've missed? Um, lots of cooking videos and uh, just basically education around healthy eating and food as medicine. Yeah, fantastic. Mm. Um, make sure you stick with this. This is this is going to be a game changer for you. This podcast, a little bit different to the to the normal business or entrepreneurial type podcasts that uh, that Jeremy's been doing, but um, this is going to be an absolute cracker. So, um, I just want to share with you just to frame this up um, what this podcast is is where we're going to go with it, with a little story of of how we met Joe and. Um, when I was farming on Kangaroo Island back in, it would have been back in 2015, our daughter, Indy, she was three at that stage, I think, two or three, um, and she had eczema to a degree. Um, it, it wasn't bad eczema, but it was, uh, as, as far as it wasn't all, it wasn't all over her body, but it was sort of on her feet and behind her knees quite severely, mm-hmm. quite severe. Um, and it got to a stage where she... It was it was bad enough that it was bleeding on top of her feet. So her her bed bed wall just got covered in blood. Oh my goodness! Um, so we yeah, and I, I suppose I want to talk to when I, that was when I first met Farm Owners Academy as well, and we were in that that mindset of really um, being curious about learning more. I suppose mm. so we we realised that we were trapped in a bottle. When the two lessons were um, for me, two great quotes were: "You don't know what you don't know." So that was really at the forefront of my mind. Um, so I realised that there's something else around this eczema with Indy that we could go and work on and go and re- uh, find, do some research on and find out some better answers. Um, and also the other one was uh, the wise man or the wise person has big ears and a short tongue. <laughs> so talk less, ask questions. Mm-hmm. So, so th- Putting those two together, it's all about, okay, how can I go and educate myself more by asking better questions and, and finding people like yourself that we hadn't – so this whole concept of what you're about to teach us, um, I was oblivious to it. Yeah. Um, and we thought we were healthy eaters mm-hmm. before that. So but we all start off like that. We do, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And that's – yeah, and the, the journey is, is just as exciting as um, mm. the end result, anything that we do. But, um, yeah, so we, we went to the doctor and, and – Nothing against the, the 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 GP that we saw, but we weren't really happy with the outcome that we got with Indy's mm-hmm. eczema. Yeah. So we were to go away, and um, Becky spoke to a local um, farmer on Kangaroo Island, and she put us onto your uh, Thermomix mm-hmm. recipe book, um, which was a game changer, and still a lot to learn for us. So then, it just happened to be perfect timing that you were running a retreat up here in the Tablelands. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Becky signed up and come along to your retreat, and. Um, we followed your principles and mm-hmm. within two weeks, our whole family, so Indy's eczema cleared up within two weeks. Amazing. And um, we made a commitment that if she was going to do it, we're all going to yeah. stick to this program. Um, and even our other kids' um, behaviours wow. that didn't have yeah. food allergies mm-hmm. were just changed within, yeah. within a week and, and we felt a lot more energised and better in ourselves as well. So mm. um, that's how we met Joe. Um, so how do, can, can, can you just sort of talk to, I suppose, what 
you do. Yep. Um, to give, give it a bit of a frame up and then share your story. Yeah, I, it's funny you saying about not like you didn't change your diet because of behavioural issues. You changed because of eczema, but then all these other benefits happened. That's what happened with us. Um, we had been working towards a healthier diet for years. Like I was always interested in food for health, but um, you know, oh goodness, twenty five or whatever years ago when I first started working on my health, I thought that things were healthy that weren't. And, you know, if you listen to the mainstream media or whatever, you're just going to be completely confused because you're told, um, for instance, one minute you're told butter is evil and it's going to give you cancer and the next minute you're told it's a superfood and coconut oil will give you cancer and then coconut oil will heal cancer and eggs are bad for you and if you eat one it's the same as smoking five cigarettes and then that was actually in a netflix documentary (laughs) i got the puppy sorry you've got to get rid of all the animals there's a lot of them we had a cockatiel cockatiel (laughs) Cockatiel first um yeah, so it's it can be very confusing if you're just trying to get your health information from the mainstream media, um, whatever pops up on Facebook and Instagram, whatever pops up in news channels, um, and that's where a lot of people get their health information from. Sorry. <laughs> he wants to be out here with the He fun. wants to be on the podcast. He does. Um, so, you know, I, I find so many people and me when I, you know, years ago before it was even mainstream media it was just the sort of things that we were told like fat's bad for you um should you should eat vegetarian or you should um you know all these things so I went through a stage when I was young like in my early years of marriage with little kids and I had always struggled with my health I'd always been underweight um I'd always had food reactions and really bad histamine reactions all my life I can never remember a time where I didn't have really bad histamine reactions, constant sneezing, um, sick tummy as well, you know, the headaches, the itchy skin, and then I had all the food intolerances, the gut stuff. Um, So that's probably why, like, right from the time I was a teenager, I was trying to figure this stuff out and I would go to dietitians and doctors and, you know, try and get some advice. Um, But the things that I was told was, okay, like when I was a teenager, I was told, Um, just take these little pills every time you have dairy and that will help you cope. Or I was told, take this medication for your skin because I had terrible skin. Um, Put this cream on your skin, Mm. which took a layer off. Um, I was told, sprinkle sustagen on all your food because that will help you gain weight. Um, Sustagen-flavoured mashed potato is not nice, I'm just (laughs) saying. Um, (laughs) I was told to drink soy milk. I was told to take medication for my hormonal issues that started when I was in my late teens. Um, I did everything they said religiously. Nothing changed. I did not gain a single kilo of weight. I was was very underweight. Um, I didn't stop having headaches and, you know, all the hormone issues and I just, it just didn't change anything. So I, yeah. then my idea was, well, this must be genetic. There's nothing I can do about it. I have to live with it. So I just take antihistamines and I'll just, you know, take Panadol for headaches and I'll just live with it. And yeah. that's what a lot of people come to. They think, Absolutely. well, there's nothing. I, and as you get older, you start taking more and more medications and then this one interacts with that one and you get another problem. And so you take another medication and, it's like this downward spiral. And I know in the back of my mind, I had this gut instinct that um, that's not how it's meant to be. And surely there's something to do with food. If I could figure out how to eat, then maybe I would get well. So that was in the back of my mind. And so I was, um, we were on a very tight budget when we were early married. It was like single income, um, And I was scouring op shops for um, recipe books and books on health and just reading everything I could. That's back then it was, um, it was still not really a lot online. You know, we, I think we got a computer about that time, but yeah. Um, So I was trying to go more vegetarian. I was cutting all the fat off my meat. I didn't eat bacon or pork. I tried to really reduce the any kind of animal products. Um, 
and I went dairy free, gluten free, sugar free, bit by bit. And um, yeah, I tried so many different. You know, it's now looking back, it's like a lot of fad kind of stuff. You yeah, know, yeah. if you do this well, liver cleansing diet, you will be well. Or yeah. if you <laughs> and so many, so many farmers that are listening would be able to um, relate to that. Relate to that because. Yeah, the, the information out there is so confusing because it's of all so those factors. It's so confusing. Yeah. It's so confusing. And every health documentary that comes out confuses you more. And I get told this all the time. People just don't know which way to turn. And so they give up and eat whatever mm. because what's the use? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you may as well be happy. Die happy. That's what my auntie told us um, <laughs> when we questioned one of the, I think there was um, she bought a cake to share with us and it had Sodium lauryl sulfate in the cake. Yeah, right. This is in America. Yeah. My parents are American. And my mum nearly died and she's oh, like, wow. oh, well, you know, if you if you um, eat healthy, it just means you'll be in the nursing home longer. That's what she said. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, that's not the way to look at it. Yeah. But, you know, it's. I think it's just the overwhelm, the constant confusion. So, yeah, I started to learn things little by little. And, you know, looking back now, I go, why? You know, what I know now is so common sense. Why doesn't everybody just instinctively know it? But we've gotten so far away from common sense, you know, in our farming, in our health, in our diet, in our lifestyle. And if you look at it from a traditional viewpoint, the way that human beings have eaten and lived for thousands of years, and then you look at the difference with how we live and eat now, you just, it's like they wouldn't recognise most of the food that we eat now. Yeah. Um, and when you look at it that way, you go, well, you know what? They were thriving on those foods for thousands of years. Why have we suddenly changed it and then wondered what's gone wrong? Um, so, yeah, I started to learn about, little by little, <laughs> I started to learn about how food can improve or worsen your health. I started going to a naturopath when my youngest child was one. Um, I've got four kids. And um, I was just so unwell. My anxiety had really flared by then. My weight got down to 42 kilos. Wow. I was 35 years old. Um, just I would go and hide in my room and just cry. I just felt so yuck. And I, want, I was trying to homeschool my kids and cook everything from scratch. I was absolutely exhausted. And um, I started going to a naturopath and started learning about a little bit about gut health. Like this was 20 years ago, so it was, no, 18 years ago. So it was kind of still not really well known, but my naturopath must have been a bit ahead of the curve because I remember him drawing a picture of the gut lining and how, um, you know, different foods affect it and what, and I just sort of most of it went over my head, yeah. but it was the beginning of understanding that food does affect you and you can't just put anything into your body and expect your body to work optimally if it's not what your body needs for nourishment. Yeah, I used to do, I used to do a lot of training for the Aussie Rules footy yeah. down in South Australia and I was of the, so in my late teens and early 20s, my thought process was I could eat anything because yeah. I would out-train it. Oh, I used to say I can eat anything because I never gain weight. Yeah. That's what I told all my yeah. friends. And then I one can of eat my... all the ice cream, chocolate, doesn't matter. <laughs> if, if, you, if you go to the gym afterwards, it doesn't matter. But one of, the, one of the fav my favourite quotes is that you can't out-exercise a bad diet. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Because you're, you're sick on the – you might look good on the outside, but you're still sick on the inside. And one thing I've really noticed both with my kids and – other people, other families that I talk to, um, people will say, oh, well, we can eat anything. We've got like iron guts. We can eat absolutely anything. And then in the next breath, they'll start telling you how their kids have eczema or mm -hmm. asthma or how they don't sleep well at night or they've, they're have they wetting the bed still even though they're nine or they're um, having behavioural issues or um, constantly getting colds and they don't equate that with the way that they eat yeah. at all. Yeah. And it's funny because, you know, um, we'll take a little pill and we know that that affects our health and that's a tiny little thing that goes into our digestive system. We know that affects our health, but we're eating kilos of food and saying, no, that doesn't affect my health. Yeah. <laughs> um, Absolutely. Yeah, so I started to understand more about it, yeah, probably about 18 to 20 years ago was when I first started to really look into it deeply. And then as I went along um, learning more and more, I thought we were doing well. I was starting to improve. Um, my histamine issues had slowed down a little. What we changed was um, 
eating without additives, preservatives, colours, so foods without that, so natural whole foods. We were trying to focus mostly on that. I was cooking most things from scratch, like not buying packet foods as much as possible. Um, I was also working on gluten-free as much as possible or at least low gluten, mm-hmm. so spelt and things like that. Yep. So still still meats, lots of meats. Still yep. having meat. So um, I was. I probably took me a long time to get over the don't eat fat thing. Yep. Like that was in my head. From I remember being 16 years old and telling my mum off for using butter yep. and so she swapped to margarine. Oh, sorry, mum. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure we come back to that. Already, it's one a really important lesson, I think, about understanding yeah, fats. So fats, we'll yeah, we can come back to that. Um, so, yeah, I started having no dairy because that was the main thing that caused reactions. And, yeah, little by little I started to improve. But then what I was really doing was um, I was working on symptoms. I wasn't working on the root cause. Mm-hmm. And so I was saying, oh, if I take this food out, then I don't get this reaction. If I take this food out, oh, they must be bad foods. So, you know, in my mind, wheat and gluten and dairy and sugars, they must be bad because they're causing reactions. And that's a very, um, for one thing, it's kind of a black and white way of thinking, which is not a good idea with food, but it's also a very simplistic way of looking at it. And there's so many more variables to food than good and bad. (laughs) Um, And as I went along um, thinking I was doing great, wrote my first cookbook, um, and that was more focused on allergy-friendly cooking. So the Quirky Cooking Cookbook was focused on pulling out the foods that cause reactions, basically, and adjusting it for your particular diet. Um, And it's a good first step because I guess if you're having reactions, you do have to pull those foods out for a while. But if that's all you do, things are not going to change. They'll actually get worse because you'll you'll find that you react to more and more foods time goes on because you haven't dealt with the root cause so diets get like you'll see this with kids with allergies they'll often take out one food take out another food and then in a few months another food becomes intolerated and um, that's because they're not actually healing um, and their gut health is getting worse and so they're tolerating less and less and so that was what was happening to us so then our health started to go downhill yeah okay so um, just taking out foods is not the answer. It's, it's, the, um, it's kind of like the, the Band-Aid that can help or I'm not, I don't know how to explain it, but it's, it's like the first step to help calm down the reactions, but it's not the end step. Yeah. yeah. Um, so my son, when he was 13, Isaac, um, my book had just come out and he'd been getting really anxious but I thought that was his personality. I thought he's just one of these very sensitive kids, like pulls his socks off screaming because they don't match or whatever, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, probably a lot of you, some of you have kids or no kids like that. Like you turn the water on in the bathtub and they scream because the bath's going to overflow or um, everything's intense. Yep. And that's what he was like. And I thought that was just his personality. That's just how he, I had to hold him on my lap a lot and just calm him down and then he'd go play again. And But it got worse. And then just it seemed like overnight he suddenly got so bad that he couldn't cope with everyday life. And by then he was 13. Um, he couldn't just sit down at the table and eat a meal. He couldn't go and have a shower, go to the toilet, change his clothes, get into bed, it, nothing. He, he couldn't do He was like... Um, I don't like to say, well, he was kind of like a zombie. He was out of it. Wow. And he would he would stand in the middle of the lounge room screaming and waving his arms around and, and staring off into space like he could see something that we couldn't see. It was really spooky. Yeah. And screaming and saying, no, no, the rocks are closing in on me. And he, like he could see stuff that we couldn't see. Yeah, okay. Um, he was really scared of snakes. We don't even, like we've never... Well, I think once we've had a snake in our yard, but he kept imagining that he was getting bitten by snakes, even in bed. Um, So he'd be screaming and throwing the covers off, a snake's bitten me, a snake's bitten me. And this would, like, 11 o'clock at night, he'd just Mm. start screaming. Nobody could sleep. can't imagine how that would be as a a parent. That would not be much fun It was awful. It was just the constant crying and screaming and everything was 
like he couldn't wear grey because that was the colour of rocks and that was closing down and he couldn't eat because if the spoon touched his teeth then he would scream and throw it so I had to spoon feed him, um, I had to dress him. He'd go into the toilet and he'd be gone for half an hour and you'd be like, where is he? And you'd go and find him and he was flushing the toilet over and over and over and over and over or, or going in and out of the door over and over and over. So I started just really researching what could this be and um, went to the doctors and cut a long story short, basically he was diagnosed with severe OCD and anxiety. Yeah, okay. And I always thought OCD was like hand washing and germs, but no, yeah. it's a lot more. <laughs> so is that is that an autoimmune disease? Yeah, or- sim- it's similar. It's it's definitely gut health related. Yeah. Um, he, he just really didn't cope with, well, I'll go into that later, but... Yeah. Um, at first, what we didn't realize was that it was gut health related. At first, we just thought, you know, what in the world are we going to yeah. do? So, what would what would you, the normal conventional mindset medicine. be around that? Is it like so medicine? But for is it is it because of gen- genetic? Would they say ge- it's no. genetic, or is it just a, a, a disease that you? It's like born one with of or? the many behavioral things that are becoming more and more common. Yeah. Um, we weren't given any reason for why it happened yeah, at all. Yeah. Like we were just told this is what he has, he has to go on medication. Yeah, okay. And I was, I remember sitting at the doctors with him and I was sobbing and I was just like, I cannot handle another day of this, give him the medication. And I'm not a like give me medication kind of person anymore. So it was like my doctor's like, okay. <laughs> um, but she was, she was like, oh, you know, he can be on antidepressants all his life and it's fine lots of people are and I'm like no I don't want him on it for the rest of his life I just want it just give it to him now and then we're going to work out what to do yeah so that's what we did um and I started researching and talking to everyone I could and um I had heard a little bit about the importance of gut health and the the gut brain connection and how the health of your gut affects your brain and mental health issues and all of that kind of stuff but I didn't know much about it so that was like down the rabbit hole researching talking to heaps of natural health professionals, um, and the consensus was he definitely has gut health issues. And one of the ladies that I talked to, um, she said, oh, she ended up talking to me about all of us and she said, you know, all of you have gut health issues. My oldest daughter had candida. My second son had all the histamine issues and the runny nose and the snoring. I had the histamine issues and um, I still was having fairly a lot of colds and things like that and we just all had things wrong so she said look why don't you just all go on a gut healing diet and I'm like oh my goodness okay (laughs) that must be because I know for us when Becky brought that your lessons back Mm. from the retreat was a little bit daunting oh it is it's very daunting for most people and I had heard of the GAPS diet which is what we ended up doing but I always thought that's too harsh. I don't need that. Yeah. You know, I just need to eat whole foods and yeah. which whole foods is a great start. And most people are fine if they just eat whole foods. But the problem is all the other things sneak in, don't they? Yeah. Um, and it's not just about your food. It's also the environmental toxins. It's also about um, stress, um, not being out in nature enough, not getting enough vitamin D from sunshine. All of these things affect our gut health. And that's what I began to learn through GAPS. So GAPS stands for gut and psychology syndrome or gut and physiology syndrome. And it's a protocol um, which was developed by a neurologist and nutritionist in, um, she lives in England. And um, she developed it probably 25 years or so ago um, for her son. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because he was, um, I'm not sure what of all the details, but I know he was diagnosed with autism and she thought, I'm going to do everything I can to help him to be the best health he can be and um, started working on all these things that she'd learned um, growing up in Russia. Um, Her grandmother was like the medicine woman in the village and she would help people with natural foods that's how and and herbs that she grew and um so she started putting those kinds of things into practice in her own family with her son and he became so much better that he doesn't have an autism diagnosis anymore he went to uni he he's fine um he like i think with a lot of kids um with autism if you take away again take away the foods they really react to heal the gut the symptoms reduce so much um, and that's what she found because it's so much inflammation that causes 
um, the issue. So it's reducing inflammation, healing the microbiome so that your food digests properly so you can get the nourishment from your food and then also really reducing the toxins in the environment, having um, food that isn't covered in pesticides, um, having um, plenty of time outside in nature, having the detox baths and um, swimming in natural rivers and oceans and things like that. All of this is part of the protocol and we just dived in like full blast, dived in, started on it and within a few days I was like, oh, this is too hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we pulled back a bit and we just, what I ended up doing was clearing the calendar. I said, right, for a month we're not going to be going to any, like we didn't have any parties or weddings or anything booked in um, because before that we'd had a lot of stuff and that made it too hard yeah. when you're, you know. Yeah, and this, and this, like so many farmers are busy, which is obviously yeah. what we, we teach. And we that was the problem. slow everything down for farmers mm. and we get caught on that hamster wheel at the expense a lot of the time is with our family relationships, yes, um, our social time, our personal time, and, exactly. and and then ultimately our health. And the stress levels get so high. Every time you get really stressed, that changes your gut microbiome in ten minutes. Mm. Like it affects your gut. Like if any of you listening have anything like um, IBS or Crohn's disease or anything like that, you'll know that as soon as you get a stressful episode, that will flare. It's very quick. Yeah. Um, and, and we there's a lot of science around that. There is. Yeah, and we it? don't realise how much stress affects us. So we decided for a month we're going to reduce the busyness, which is part of stress, and reduce the stress as much as possible, just like rest. And I was homeschooling, thankfully. So, you know, we rested, we read books, we went to the lake, we calmed everything down, we ate well without restricting the diet completely. And then as we felt like we could, we changed the diet. Yeah. And um, I think looking back, that's definitely a good way to do it, even if you don't take anything out of the diet at first, but you just start by adding in healing foods and reducing stress and getting out in the sunshine and sleeping more if you need to or, you know, resting and playing together and having that, you know, communal uh, community kind of stuff going on. So doing things with friends and family, um, playing games nights with the kids or whatever. So yeah. you start slowing down and enjoying life more and start bringing in healing foods. For some people, that completely changes everything and that's all you need to do. Yeah, yeah. Some people will find they're reacting to things and they have to take out some foods for a while. But if you're focusing on whole foods and you're focusing on healing foods, um, you know, it can be a gradual progression. It doesn't have to be an overnight black and white diet starts Monday approach. And I don't think that is a good sustainable approach anyway. Um, so, yeah, it took us a little bit to work into. And then um, we just worked on getting as much healing food in as we could. So, um, can I can I just jump share? In. There's one of the best things that if anyone wants to go and do something uh -huh. like even before you change the diet and, and put yep. any of these into place so like the slight edge the book the slight edge by jeff olson would oh, be yeah. such a great book to go and read or listen to if you haven't um because it frames up how you can get into a position to do this and the uh, mindset around yes. nailing this i suppose so mm. the slight edge is like um, a big flywheel as a farmers we all know what flywheels are they're like obviously that they're a big heavy wheel that with one push they're not going to spin mm. but with multiple little pushes it'll get build momentum build momentum build momentum yes and basically you're developing habits over time we want yep. to change generally we want to change our life overnight mm. um with any success whether it's your business your relationships your health it takes time yep. um you look at a professional athlete they can't go from an average swimmer or runner overnight mm. just because they decide they, they're going to do it. They, it takes years and years and years to do yeah. it. And, and in this case for us, it was two weeks. Mm. It took us two Which weeks is amazing. to get the results. Yeah. And they say with kids it is generally quicker because they don't have, you know, so many years of ill health to mm. work through. And it's like you can't walk into a forest for an hour and then expect to get out in five minutes. Um, next animal, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's not, it's not a farming podcast if we don't have animals in the background. <laughs> Sorry about that. We have a, a cat that's actually deaf and so, uh, yeah, he's very loud. Can't hear, can't hear no, himself. No, he can't hear himself. <laughs> um, so, yeah, well, I found 
little by little working on these things was the way to go because then it's sustainable yeah. and you're not stressing everybody. If if your changes to your diet stress you out so much that you're in a fetal position on the floor and you can't cope, then that is going to make you sicker than if you just kept the same diet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, you can't expect to, to heal if you're very, very stressed. So you have to do it in a in a way that suits your family and your situation and what you can cope with and what you can do every day regularly and not something that you just do for one week and then give up on. Yeah. Yeah. So it's definitely, you know, um, I definitely teach a sustainable, gentle approach over a, you know, there's a lot of hardcore diets out there where they say, um, for instance, people with parasites will do these great big parasite cleansers that completely devastate your health for a few weeks yeah and they can't work they can't do anything because they're so sick yeah um so yeah to me that's not the best approach i think taking it slow and gentle and working through it um so that it becomes a way of life yeah. and not a diet yeah, is what's important so the first thing that i always recommend people do is work on going whole food so reduce yeah. the chemicals and the toxins and the um, additives, preservatives, colours, packaged foods. If you're going to buy a packaged food, check the ingredients. Don't worry about the, I don't know, calories or whatever. Check the ingredients yeah. um, and make sure that they're real whole foods. And then the next step would be to start adding in some healing foods. So um, my biggest recommendation is meat stocks. Um, that that liquid that you get from simmering chicken or beef or like whatever a, with like the bone broth. in yeah like yep. a broth but a short cooked yep. broth so they call in gaps they call a short cooked um broth or stock it's called a meat stock and then the long cooked ones are the bone broth okay bone broths don't taste as nice <laughs> <laughs> they take a lot longer to make yeah they're full of minerals but they're not as full of amino acids that heal the gut lining so the meat stocks the short cooked meat stocks just Two to three hours cooking chicken legs, chicken wings, carcass with feet, whatever you got. Um, so the raw meat on the bone, covered in water, bit of salt and pepper. You can put some celery, celery leaves, carrots, herbs in if you want to, but I usually just make it plain, salt and pepper, um, cook it for two to three hours, strain it off, um, pop that in the fridge or freezer as soon as possible and use the meat in soups and things. And then I use that as a base for meals. Yeah. So that's all you have to do. Like it's not hard. It's it's chicken soup, it's stews, it's curries, it's casseroles. Um, it's adding it to other foods instead of water or bought stock with powder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is similar to what my grandparents and great-grandparents exactly. were doing exactly. 40 or 50 yeah. years ago. And yeah. you can also use the bones from the roast and make a, a bone broth if you want to, like, we always grew up doing that. Mum always put the roast back in a pot, cover with water, add some veggies, simmer it, and then use that to make a soup. Yeah. So that's more of a bone broth. It's good, but it doesn't have the amino acids. So the not as many not as many amino acids that um, that heal. So that's the main foundational food for gut healing is a short cooked stock, and you just put that into your meals wherever you can. Sip it if you want to. Um, then we also recommend eggs egg yolks especially because they are so full of nourishment. Yeah. So can they be cooked or, they, or raw egg? egg? Egg yolks are best um, either raw or soft cooked. Yeah. So like a soft boiled egg is perfect, a, a poached egg, a soft fried egg, um, or you can put egg yolks raw into smoothies. Um, the egg whites are easier to digest if they're cooked and the egg yolks are easier to digest if they're raw. Okay. So a soft Soft yolk Happy egg medium. is perfect. Yep. Um, so have eggs for breakfast. Add add some egg yolks to your smoothies um, or when your soup or stock is finished cooking, just whisk an egg yolk into your cup of soup. Um, if you make pumpkin soup, add a couple of raw egg yolks at the end and blend it. It goes super creamy. It's delicious. No one will know they're there. That is the thing about <laughs> Gap's diet is it just that, that blew me away. I thought this is going to be um, bland, yeah. hard to eat food, no. but it was the opposite. It was just an incredible food. It's funny. When I first started working on my health with the naturopath, I was like, um, 
so I suppose you're going to tell me I need to eat heaps of salads. And I am not the kind of person that likes a lot of salad. Mm. I just naturally gravitate towards soups and stews and cooked veggies and curries and things. I like a hot meal. And he's like, no, I don't want you eating salads at all for a while because they're heaps easier to um, sorry, they're heaps harder to digest than cooked veggies. Yeah. And I was like, yay, <laughs> my body was telling me. <laughs> I Like if I'm not feeling well and I've been travelling a lot, I'll come home and all I want is like chicken soup or a slow-cooked lamb shanks or something mm. like that, just really nourishing. And that's exactly what um, is perfect for healing the gut. So, yeah, make your get your bits and pieces of, um, you know, when you get a whole lamb and you get the all the bits that, nobody knows what to do with that's when you make your beautiful lamb stocks yeah. um you've got all the you know the neck chops and the all that sort of thing that's what you can make your stocks from don't go feeding them to the dogs anymore no, eat them <laughs> next up <laughs> um so then yeah egg yolks good fats so we were going to yeah, talk about loved it, fats. Loved it. Love to get your take yep. on on fats. So egg yolks are very high in certain types of fats, um, and one of them is the fat that's in breast milk, and it's very hard to get in most foods. Like most foods, other foods don't have it. Um, there's also choline. I've forgotten the name of it. Sorry, it's got a really long name. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's got the fatty acids and the um, the um, amino acids, and it's just very nourishing and and the fat helps to heal the gut. So other fats that you also want to get into your diet are anything that is an animal fat that's naturally processed, not refined. Um, So you want your homemade tallow, lard, um, those kind of like any of the fat left over from stock or from roasts or from soups or whatever that's got a layer of fat, keep that. Sorry, (coughs) dry throat. So if like the fat on your chops, for example, which normally would be associated with heart disease, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, high cholesterol. Yeah, yeah, eat it. Um, so that is as long as it's grass fed. Yep. So you, you you guys probably know about the benefits of grass fed over grain fed. fed yeah, today. yeah, you can speak to that for sure. <laughs> um, so with animals, naturally, obviously, they ate grass um, with grazing animals, so sheep and goats and cows and all of that. So when we feed um, these animals in a feedlot on grains, um, it completely changes the ratio of omega-3 to omega-6. So in a, in a natural, healthy animal living on pasture, um, the ratio will be one to one. Yep. That's the traditional ratio and that's what our bodies thrive on. Um, animals that have been raised in feedlots on grain um, the ratio is closer to 16 to 20 to 1. Yeah, right. And it's a completely unhealthy ratio. And that's where you start getting these studies that say meat causes cancer and all this kind of stuff because it causes inflammation. And inflammation is pr- the precursor to any disease, including cancer. Um, so if you are eating fat from animals, um, as much as possible, try to make sure the animals are raised in a way that's natural. So, you know, um, grazing animals having been raised on pasture, chickens being able to run free and peck at bugs and all that kind of stuff. So you guys know all that, I'm sure. Um, But it's just it does change the meat and the eggs um, if they're raised properly and the fat. If they're raised, you know, in that factory farming kind of way, um, that's where the... That's where the tests come from that say it's not healthy. Okay. Yeah. Because they're testing those animals and it isn't healthy for us. Yeah. Yep. It's not healthy for them and it's not healthy for us. Um, so you want to get good quality fat. Um, if you're having any kind of fats from vegetables, nuts, or seeds, it needs to be unrefined, cold pressed. So, so for instance, cold pressed olive oil, cold pressed macadamia or um, almond oil, um, organic if possible. Try to have your fats really high quality because your cells, your cell walls are made out of the fats that you eat. So if you are consuming oxidised, rancid fats that have been processed in a factory like canola oil, vegetable oil, um, grapeseed oil, saffron oil, all those highly processed fats that have to be bleached and coloured and deodorised and highly heated and pressured, um, that can't be made traditionally. They have to be made in a laboratory or a factory. Um, 
those kind of fats will damage your cells and cause oxidative stress and that will lead to cancer or heart disease or all sorts of things. Um, so you want fats that have been made traditionally, uh, that can be made traditionally. So, for instance, coconut oil, um, I've made that before from fresh coconuts. It's yep. not hard. Um, you can make your own macadamia oil if you wanted to with your press, you know, yep. and get the oil out. Same with olive oil. So the, so the, t- the two main easy ones are cold-pressed olive oil yep. and coconut oil. Yeah, would be there and to, to cook with, and, and well, to cook fats. with, yeah, ghee. I use yep. ghee a lot, so that's just clarified butter. So you just cook the butter down really low heat until the milk solids separate and, and go to the bottom, and then you've got this golden butter fat that mm. is so delicious. It's caramelized butter. I mean, how nice. can you lose? Can, uh, <laughs> can, Joe, can you can you talk to like just on the fats sort of thing? What's yep. the difference between butter? Oh, mm-hmm. And margarine. Okay, so margarine is a processed factory type oil that has been, so for instance, if they use canola or whatever as the base, um, genetically modified generally, and you guys I'm sure know all about that. Um, And then, yeah, the heat process completely wrecks the molecules. Um, It ends up being a dark colour and it stinks Mm. apparently, and they bleach it and um, deodorize it and colour it and put all these fillers and things in it and then sell it to you as a health product. It's a byproduct of other things. Yeah. And they they sell it. It was basically to save money during the war that they started making it. Um, it's not a health product at all. Um, you don't want your cells made of that. Yeah. You want your cells made of real fat that's yeah. good for you <laughs> which which is which is a good quality butter isn't it like a, a lot of yeah. same thing like butter can be seen as oh, yeah high it's, cholesterol well, and yeah mm. it, um the cholesterol in butter and good fats is actually cholesterol that our brains need and our hormones yep. need and if you have um really low cholesterol you're more likely to get colds your immune system will be lower um, you'll have more trouble with your hormones you'll start to get fuzzy headed and not thinking well um, you've got to have a certain level of cholesterol in your system. Otherwise, your body will make cholesterol if you're not eating enough. And so make sure you're eating good quality fats and then you'll have the good cholesterol um, and, yeah, you'll just be a lot healthier. Yeah. But I, I read in the GAPS book, um, Dr. Natasha was talking about the importance of cholesterol for immune systems and I never knew that. It was fascinating. So look that up if you haven't heard of that. Um, yeah, so good fats. Meat stocks, eggs, egg yolks, um, fermented foods, really, really good idea to get some fermented foods into your diet. And that's, I'm not talking about beer. I'm I'm talking about um, like the way that people used to um, preserve vegetables. So just um, just a regular sauerkraut that's made with salt water. Yeah. Um, Sorry, with salt and then you can add brine if you want to. Um, yeah, fermented veggies, um, you can get kombucha and all those kind of things as well, milk, kefir, um, coconut water, kefir, all sorts of things. But the different, each different ferment, um, even yogurt, good quality yogurt, so different ferments will have different benefits, different probiotics, so it's good to have a variety. Same with vegetables, plenty of variety um, because they all do different things and different nutrients and then have little bits each day. So maybe a tablespoon of sauerkraut with your meal and a, um, a yogurt later. Yeah. And yeah. you know, yeah. That's probably one thing that overwhelmed me a little bit at the start was that you, you, what's it, like people talk about multivitamins and mm. all these different things that they do. Um, it's almost you've got to build a routine and so yes. have a bit of this at that. A bit and of that, that's bit why of that. you've got to start slowly and add it in and then get used to that before yeah. you add the next thing. Absolutely. So that's... Don't be overwhelmed by that at no. all. Like you don't need to be a scientist to understand all of this. It's once you once you start moving forward in this direction, it, it all makes easier. sense. And it's quite and, sense, it is really, really simple. And if you're if you're just thinking, okay, all I'm doing is adding in healing foods. I'm not saying you have to have something of this each food group every day. Yeah. Like when you're first starting, you just do what you can. You make a big pot of chicken stock, um, you add that to some meals, put some in the freezer. For another day um, and then, you know, sometime you might buy a jar of good quality um, sauerkraut, 
Uh, it needs to be cold in a fridge. Otherwise, if it's been pasteurized, it's yeah. lost a lot of its goodness. Um, or you can start making it if you if you want to experiment with that. Yeah. But I know most people are time poor and they start with buying it. Um, yeah, don't be scared of eggs for breakfast. Um, add in some, you know, more vegetables than you would usually eat. Just get those veggies in there because the fiber from vegetables helps to cleanse the body. Um, don't be scared of good quality meat and leave the fat on. So it's just understanding these things and working them out as you go and not, mm. not ever feeling stressed that you're not doing enough, yeah. but always think, you know what, I'm doing more now than I used to be doing. That's it, yeah. <laughs> I've added yeah. one thing in, I'm reducing my stress. I'm doing more than I used to do. <laughs> Absolutely. And it just accumulates over time. It does. Joe, I think uh, su successful business, successful health, whatever it might be, preparation is the key. Mm. So we we teach um, a lot around planning. Yes. For, for success in business, it's about I'm planning. Big, and, I'm big on planning. So we're not reactive. We're proactive yep. versus reactive. And, and can you sort of share how the key of preparing your week ahead for your mm -hmm. meals rather than yeah. I'm hungry, Got yes. nothing to eat. There's nothing cooked. I'm going to just go and grab a muesli bar out the out the yeah. cupboard, or because that's what happens. Or you go and buy something at the shop. Yeah. Um, as in takeaway. Um, yeah. So I, right from the time I sort of first started my own family, I was meal planning and preparing ahead, especially if you're on a budget. Mm. <laughs> um, it just saves you so much money if you're not shopping every day. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also just thinking about what you already have on hand and using what you've got so you're not wasting food. And I think that's a big thing in our culture is we just get so blasé about waste. Yeah. Um, so if we, like if I'm, when I'm planning my meals, I'll first look through the fridge, see what needs using up, what vegetables I've got. I'll look through the freezer and see what I've got in there that needs to be used, the pantry, and then I'll have a bit of an idea in my head of what needs to be used first mm -hmm. um, and then I'll um, think of recipes that suit those foods. If you if you ha if you need help with that, it's so easy just to go online and, and search for um, recipes with spinach if you've got heaps of it or recipes with carrots or whatever and just find some things that you can make. And I also sort of divide each day into um, so we might have, you know, just for, for main meals. I usually just plan main meals. So you might have chicken on Tuesday and maybe you have fish on Friday or roast on Sunday or whatever it is. Sort of get those basic um, guidelines down yeah. and then think about what you could make with those things. So that's how I've sort of always done it. Um, I bulk everything out with vegetables. Like we eat a lot of vegetables. Um, it saves money and it's just good to get a big variety of vegetables for your health of your microbiome. Mm. Having said that, there's probably a little bit of meat at each meal, even breakfast and lunch, yeah. <laughs> um, and that's fine. Yep. Um, meat or eggs and sometimes legumes as long as they're well prepared um, and that helps to bulk meals out as well. Um, and I try to make big batches and then freeze some in um, smaller containers for another day. So those days when you're super busy, you can grab something out of the freezer, you've got something healthy ready to go. Instead of making um, just a, a meal for four when you're cooking something, just go ahead and double it. Yeah, you know? that was one of the keys yeah. for our success was yeah. and – it was a triple it if it was, you can. Yeah, was, just <laughs> fill it up, make as many bowls as you can. And, Especially if it's freezable. Yeah. So it, just the simple thing of doubling your dinner. Yeah. And then the next day you've got lunch. Exactly. And it's a, an incredible. And that's lunch pretty much how we eat. We have a big batch at dinner that I make, and then we pack the lunch boxes for the next day. And the yep. kids take thermoses to work or whatever. And um, yeah, we don't really have sandwiches and stuff like that for for work. It's all leftovers. Perfect. Mm. Um. We just mindful of time. I could probably do five podcasts with you because and continue to go. <laughs> Sorry, on, it's, so, it's, it's incredible information. Um, and hopefully I, we've changed a few. Par uh, we've challenged a few paradigms, <laughs> people's paradigms here today. I forgot to say about how Isaac went on the diet. Sorry. Oh yeah, so yeah, John, let's go back um, to that. Yeah, yeah, within a couple of weeks, he'd come out of that really fog stage and had already started to smile again and laugh wow. and that was amazing because he'd been crying constantly yeah. um within about a month he started working at the local supermarket on the checkouts wow. he was 13 14 by then 
or 13, I can't remember. Anyway, he was tiny because he, like me, he couldn't gain weight yeah. and he wasn't growing. Um, and you'll see that a lot with kids with gut health issues. They'll stay very small. Yeah. Um, so he was very tiny and he got comments all the time by people saying, are you sure you're old enough to work here? Um, and he just took off though. He just, like his whole um, personality came back. It was like he was this really happy, outgoing kid again. Um, within about six months, I reckon he could have come off his medication, but he was so scared to. He was yep. so scared he would go right back to where he went. And I talked to the psychologist about it and she said, it's not the medication. She said, usually the doctor's doubled the dose by now. Wow. And she said, it's it's everything else you're doing. So he, we waited till he was ready and we eased him off um, at about 11 months. Yeah. And... Um, he was. He just has never looked back. He just turned twenty this week, last week. Wow! This Happy week, birthday, yeah. <laughs> so th- seven years now. That is since then, and um, he's got his own house, renting um, with his friend, and he cooks all his own meals. He's really taken on responsibility for his own diet. Um, he knows that if he eats refined sugary foods with refined oils that he gets anxious. Yeah. He gets anxious very quickly if he does that and his skin breaks out so he doesn't like that. You know, the girls wouldn't like that. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> There's a tip for you. If you're yeah. in your late teens or early 20s and you're looking for a partner, yeah. healthy food because healthy you'll be glowing. Eating. You'll have a, a glowing energy about you. Have the glowing skin. Um, so, yeah, he is very careful with his diet and cooks from scratch and He's got a full-time job that he loves and, yeah, it's never gone back on medication. Wow. That is incredible. What a, what a great story. And yeah. it speaks to the positive outcomes on challenges. So, mm. obviously, so many farmers are going through so, go through so many different challenges. Yeah. Um, and if you look at it in the right way and actually do something about it and be curious, which is one of my mm. favourite concepts around, okay, yes. how, do we, how do we turn this into an opportunity, which is what you've done. And, yeah. Um, the amount of lives that you've been able to change through your work and the amount of following that you have got. Like I think what have, over 70,000 followers on Instagram or something. It's um, yeah, 270-something on oh, Facebook. Oh, wow. Incredible. <laughs> that is. In, in, that is incredible. So that speaks to the quality of work that <laughs> Joe does. And um, just speak, I'd just like to finish off on um, some good stories, I suppose. So Isaac's Indy, mm. so, and we'll come back to Indy in a sec, in, in a sec but... Um, or that everyone that's listening can re- they'll be able to relate in some way, mm. I think, to um, people in their community or people in their family or themselves. So if we can just reel off a few different, um, I guess, issues or mm-hmm. or health pe- health problems that people have got that might be able to relate and, yeah. and good stories that you've seen oh, yeah. that, that can come from. Well, for myself, like I said, my anxiety was really bad. Um, as I healed and as I learned to let go of stress, <laughs> Um, and learned not to be so busy all the time, learned to let myself rest at the end of the day and not keep working till 10.30 at night. Um, as I learned to, um, I guess, let go of a lot of the, the, when you do start changing your diet, sometimes it can be stressful. And like I said, it can cause more problems than it's worth. But I had to learn how to have that flexibility and balance um, and I healed from, yeah, I, I started to gain weight and mm. <laughs> as you can see, um, <laughs> <laughs> I had really hollow cheekbones and dark circles yeah. under my eyes. And for, for those that can't see, Joe is absolutely glowing. At the moment. <laughs> um, so it was really good to see. It took me a year before I could handle dairy working really hard on my gut health and then after a year I could handle dairy and now I'm just like, yay, the butter fiend. Yeah. Um, I just love my butter and cheese and cream and my coffee and all of that. So good because um, yeah. I couldn't have it for so many years. Um, my, my daughter, India, her candida healed. Um, my son, Simi, stopped snoring. Um, my husband. There'll be some farmers out there that snore. If, yeah. you, if you're a wife and your husband's snoring, go and make him listen to this yeah. podcast. Yeah. Um, my husband lost weight. Um, so the same diet, he lost weight, I gained weight. So yeah. it's, you know, when you're eating properly, the way your body's designed to eat, your body takes what it needs. Yeah. Um, it feels satiated from the fats. So you don't, con- and the, and the nutri- nutrients in your food. So you don't constantly snack because mm-hmm. when you're eating refined foods, there's just not the nutrition. Yeah. So you always eat. Yeah. Um, Let's see, I've got I've got a friend who I, I work with who um, she had 
terrible chronic fatigue. She was pretty much in bed or a wheelchair if she went out. Yeah. Um, she didn't go out much. Um, she was really, really bad. And it took her, you know, longer than it did for us to work on healing. And she still has to be super careful with some things. But um, she's living a completely happy, active life wow. now, and she's a mindset coach. Oh, really? Yeah, for yeah. she'd be good to interview. Yeah. Um, she works with the nutritionist that I work with, and we're all doing the retreat together um, this next week. Um, yeah, I've seen people who were obese lose a lot of weight and get the energy that they needed to um, live a healthy life. Um, because when you are unwell, you just don't have the energy. Like people say, oh, you just have to exercise. You just have, mm -hmm. to, you just have to make yourself. It's all about willpower. It's not. If you have adrenal fatigue, chronic fatigue, exhaustion, um, you know, you, you can't push yourself to exercise because if you do, you completely mm -hmm. crash. Yep. And that's what I found. I, I tried to exercise um, hard at first and I crashed for 24 hours like I was in bed for actually it was probably longer I think I was in bed for a couple of days until I built up my health and, and restored my adrenal health um, then I could exercise but it's really um, amazing the different different people's stories that you hear I do have a lot of them on my podcast um, just so many people who were at the stage where they thought they would never be well and that they would always have that chronic illness. Yeah. Um, one lady had a kind of arthritis that's an autoimmune arthritis, and I've forgotten the name. I think it starts with S. Um, she couldn't walk her kids to school. She was in so much pain on so many medications. She worked on gut health with the GAPS protocol, and um, I remember the day that she wrote to me crying saying, I got to walk my kids to school wow. today. Oh, that makes me cry. That is um, incredible. You know, just... Seeing, seeing people come through those terrible things and seeing what Isaac came through and how happy he is now, um, it's all worth it. Like you will get flack from your friends and family when you change your diet and say, no, I'm not, no thanks to the Tim Tams and the Fanta, and you say, no, I'm just going to have some of these homemade bickies or whatever. You know, it's, it can still be delicious, but yeah, yeah. When, you, when you change the way that you eat or the way that you live, um, as probably you guys have seen with farming, <laughs> when you yeah. change um, the way, again, it, it, people take it sometimes personally and think, well, you're having a go at me because you're saying my weight is not good enough. And I think it's just helping people to um, see that you don't think like that. You just need to do the best for your family and your situation and you know, you do what you want, whatever you want to do, but this is what I feel is best for my family. And I don't know how many times I had to stick up for myself and say to people, no, that's fine. I don't mind if you have that. That's that's your choice. Yeah, but I yeah. just need to do this for my family because my son is so sick. I can't just keep going yeah. the way we were going. And sometimes we just don't get it until we see it. And, see it first and then, yeah. Uh, yeah, and people have come back to me years later and said, okay, I see you were right. After all, you did yeah. do the right thing. Yeah, I'm which, sorry I hassled you. <laughs> yeah, which this is why I challenge so many of our listeners um, and, and our members in Farmers Academy is, um, and it resonated with me. Mm. You don't know what you don't know, you and, don't. It's, and it's that's why you just got to be open. And, yes, and curious to everyone. Very all curious, uh, and I just loved you know your podcast that you did with Charlie Armour that talking about curious, um, mm. the importance of being curious. And I think with health and with food, mm. research everything, look into it, ask questions, go onto websites and social media, and ask people who. Who, when you see someone who has changed their life through food, ask them what they did. Yeah. You know, just yep. be curious. Yeah, absolutely. Well okay. done. Um, and just to finish off with Indy, my daughter, with her eczema mm -hmm. and how that healed. So this, so broths um, or, or stocks mm -hmm. and fermented food and good meats, good farm cooked meals really mm -hmm. is what it is. Um, yeah, and that's that's the thing. It doesn't have to be fancy. Yeah. My, my cooking simplified. Yeah. Which mean veg? It's uh, behind us in Joe's <laughs> award-winning oven. Uh, <laughs> where she's cooked us dinner, cooked us lunch today, so yeah. we're going to knock off in a minute and, and grab a one of the chicken uh, pot pies. Chicken pot pies from <laughs> Australia's Best Chef. <laughs> um, that's, that's gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so with Indy, leaky gut syndrome is what. So, and I don't, I'm, I don't uh, pretend I know all of it, but basically for me, it's it's 
toxins from bad foods that were going into a leaking through the um, a thin gut wall mm -hmm. into her blood and then was coming out through her skin to a degree. You can obviously speak more to that. So that's a, such a to me it seems like such a simple way to cure eczema and, it, and we saw it firsthand in, yeah. in two weeks. Well, basically, if your gut lining is leaky, because it's like a um, a woven fabric, the lining of the gut, and if the joints are leaky due to they they when it, when your gut lining's damaged from refined foods and um, stress mm -hmm. and toxins in the environment and your water or whatever, um, it becomes leaky and um, particles from your gut can get through into your bloodstream that shouldn't. Yep. And so then your body reacts to them and says intruder alert and it has a flare, an inflammation of some sort. And inflammation will come out in different ways in different people. So some people it will be eczema, some it will be migraines, some it will be mm -hmm histamine reactions and that was always me um some people it will be anxiety some people it will be a mixture of all of them yeah absolutely and, so, and then yeah. all gut like uh, the the um if you if a fish is sick you treat the water not the fish and if you're sick um which you might not even know that you are mm. like i didn't as soon as i went on this healthier diet i realized yeah. um restless leg syndrome i had which ah, is just yeah. for the, those that don't know it, that is just for Constantly. me, it was just rubbing, yeah, rubbing my feet together, especially when I slept. My um, son always tapped his like that. Yeah. Isaac, he just would constantly, you'd sit next to him and I'd push his leg down because it was constantly going like that. Yeah. And that stopped. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I'd love, I would love to challenge you guys to to learn more about this over time and um, look forward to hearing some of the, some stories come through. It, it, it 100% um, is worth all the effort. And too often we wait for some pain, we wait for a circumstance to change us. Um, That's what, what we did. I, I love Waited it. till we got desperate. Hundred <laughs> percent, and yeah, we we always yeah. need something devastating to to provoke us into a better way Sadly. of living. So, um, until what is it? The if I can't remember the quote, but something along the lines of, um, if the pain, yeah, the pain of staying the same is outweighed by the pain of change. Yes, which normally we let it get too bad to. We do to um, keep to, putting to the bandaid on and hoping for the best. <laughs> absolutely. So, Joe, just in finishing, um, yeah. obviously. Uh, Joe Whitten or Quirky Cooking on Instagram and yep. Facebook. Um, yep. I'll let you speak to it. What, what's everyone, what's the best way to sort of follow you and if learn more? you just more? search Quirky Cooking, um, my website will come up and all the links are on there. But, um, yeah, Joe Whitten on Instagram because that started off as my private page and then it just kind of became the, the regular one. Um, but if you search Quirky Cooking, you'll find it. And if you, you know, one of the easiest ways to be motivated and inspired and helped to change your diet is just watch good cooking videos and so mm. I try to get um, a lot of videos throughout my week of just just my phone showing people what I'm cooking and I've had so much feedback that that's that's the help that people need like they can look at a recipe and never get around to cooking it but yeah. when they see how easy it is they go oh is that it okay yeah, yeah I can do that <laughs> yeah. a lot of us are visual learners we are yeah yeah and that's yeah. how we as, as farmers we love to um see how it's done before yep. before we go and do it so that's a great way so and I do a lot of that yeah. yeah, and your podcast obviously as well would yeah. be a great one to podcast. To on. I tr um, I've started doing just short, um, like half an hour or fifteen minute chats um, quite often um, of things that I get asked a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. how do I make it affordable while eating healthy, or um, how do I bulk cook and prep for the week, or that kind of stuff? So, there's a lot of that really practical everyday stuff, which I love teaching. And I teach all that in my online programs, um, like everything from doing a big bulk cook up together live. Um, I also do them on my online workshops so you can get a, six meals in the freezer. Um, I also do a lot of, um, yeah, just the, the online workshops, the cooking videos and the retreats, they're sort of where I love showing people how yeah. to do the basics so that it's not overwhelming. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, Thank you so much for you. your time today and inviting us into your house here um, in the Atherton Tablelands and that lunch smells so good. We're going to uh, go, and, go and get into it. So um, thanks, everyone, for listening. Um, we hope you got something out of it. And, um, yeah, leave us a message or get in touch with us via Facebook, um, Farmers Can Be Facebook page or the Profitable Farmer Closed Facebook group. And uh, love to hear your feedback and, and if you've got any questions. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>